Hello all, I am Dr. Tanmay Deshpande. I am a pediatrician and a clinical geneticist. I am attached with Sir HN Reliance Hospital Foundation, Mumbai. Today we are here to celebrate the World Hemophilia Day, which is celebrated on the 17th of April of every year. This is um, celebrated in reference or in commemoration of the person who founded this day, uh, Dr. Frank Schnabel. Today we are going to discuss about the causes of hemophilia, the understanding about this disorder, the prophylaxis and the treatment part of it. Inherited disorder of hemophilia refers to affiliation of blood. Heme means blood and philia means love. In this case, the person who is affected with disorder results into unstoppage or continuous profuse bleeding resulting into a catastrophic event. This is caused by a genetic mutation in factor 8 and factor 9. Hemophilia A, which is caused by a deficiency of factor 8, and hemophilia B, which is caused by a deficiency of factor 9, both are inherited disorders. Only males are affected by this disorder because when we talk about a male and a female, the male or a man possesses X and Y sex chromosomes. A female or a woman possesses XX chromosomes, that is 2X chromosomes, which are also called as sex chromosomes, and X and Y in male, which is also called as sex chromosomes. This disorder is predominantly or sitting on the X chromosome. That is, the, that is the cause because of which when this is passed to the next generation, the father will contribute a Y chromosome in the boy child, whereas the mother will contribute an X chromosome to the boy child. If this disorder sits on the X chromosome which is passed by the mother, this results into acquiring of this disorder by the male child. If the father is affected by this disorder and he is procreating, then all his male children will not be affected, they will be normal, but all his daughters or female children will be carriers of this disorder because he will be contributing the affected X chromosome. Now the next question arises, how to identify these individuals with this disorder? The most earliest sign is observed in infancy when the baby or the male baby goes for vaccination or immunization. The vaccination or immunization is usually planned at one and a half months of age and when the doctor gives an intramuscular injection, there is a presence of intramuscular hematoma or internal muscular bleed. This bleed or this hematoma may take a longer time to resolve than a normal hematoma and here is where the suspicion should rise resulting into hemophilia. The next step or milestone when this can be observed in, is when the baby boy starts crawling. This results into frequent falls or trying to stand and results into frequent falls. This leads to internal bleeding in the joint space which is also called as hemarthrosis. Any baby with a swollen joint uh, a red joint or a swollen joint with irresistible cry with severe irritability should be sus suspected to have this kind of a disorder that is hemophilia. The next milestone when such bleeds are observed is when the parent tries to brush the teeth of these toddlers. Here, a usage of finger brush or a normal brush results into bleeding through the gums which does not stop on its own and they have to rush to a pediatrician. These bleeding disorders can lead to profuse amount of bleeding, leading into hypotension, that is reduction of blood pressure due to volume loss or blood loss in the body. These children have to be rushed to the hospital and the following forms of treatment are available. There is the first and foremost treatment that should be given is to replenish the lost volume. This can be achieved by giving uh, IV fluids. This can be achieved by giving add blood cells. This can also be achieved by giving fresh frozen plasma or FFP. The ultimate of the gold standard treatment for this disorder during an acute bleed is factor transfusion. But to understand whether the child requires factor transfusion, there are other tests which are required to be done. These tests are called as to calculate the factor concentration. This helps us to identify the children between mild, moderate and severe category. Any child who has a factor concentration of 5 to 40 percent is considered to be mildly effective. Any child who has a factor concentration which is less than 5 percent is said to be moderately effective. 
and any child who has a factor concentration of less than 1% is severely affected. These children need factor transfusion as soon as possible to save their lives to stop bleeding. It is always said that prevention is better than cure. How can we prevent the bleeding is the most important question that any parent comes to me as a question. The answer is, number one, we need to observe or we need to rush the child if we have an hematoma or an intramuscular bleed as soon as the child is vaccinated. This will help us identify such children at early stages and help us plan their treatment protocols. Secondly, these children have to be uh, avoided or they should avoid playing contact sports like boxing, uh, gymnastics, karate, which may result into internal bleeds. Any fall can result into an intracranial hemorrhage, which can result into inevitable brain death or death ultimately. And that is the reason such children or these children should always be kept under a strict watch to understand whether there is any chances of bleeding or any chances of developing any inter internal bleeds. The important aspect is genetic counseling and where and how can we stop the progeny from having this disorder. Suppose if an individual is affected with hemophilia and he wants to uh, try for a chatting or he wants to procreate or go to a next generation, what we can do is we can collect the blood, send it for genetic testing and we can understand uh, what kind of mutation or what kind of genetic defect the child or that person specially has. Once we identify this disorder, we can plan a prenatal test or a test in the fetus when the baby or the fetus is in the womb of the mother. This gives us a fair idea whether the baby which is going to be born will have this disorder or will not have this disorder. If we identify or we find out that this disorder is going into the next generation, the uh, couple has always, the couple has a, a chance or a right for termination of pregnancy. They can decide if they want to continue the pregnancy as well. But in such a case, they should be uh, having a complete understanding of this disorder and a complete idea of what happens if hemophilia AMP. A pediatric hematologist or a hematologist who deals in uh, identification planning of treatment of these kind of blood disorders has to be consulted as a specialty and this is a co-specialty management team that has to be always present. There are centers which provide blood transfusions or centers which keep these kind of factors or these kind of children and they have to be contacted. All blood banks all across the world or all across India have this facility. Kindly ask your pediatrician or your hematologist to register your child in case you have a child with hemophilia A or B. Just to recap the entire situation, hemophilia is an inherited disorder. It is a predominantly male affected disorder because of the presence of this disorder being on the X chromosome and a male possesses only one X chromosome and the other Y chromosome coming from the father. It is important to know the early signs of effect it is important to know the signs and symptoms the child may develop and understanding when the child requires transfusion. To go back, we need to understand a hematoma or a muscular hematoma which is taking longer time to heal after the first center of muscular vaccine. The child developing hemarthrosis or bleeding inside the joints after the child starts walking, crawling or falling so frequently. And third is when the parents start brushing the teeth of these children there is gum bleeds which are difficult to manage. Treatment protocols across uh, India are the same. Replenishing the blood loss, replenishing the volume of blood loss, maintaining the blood pressures or maintaining the tension of the blood, maintaining or giving the factor or transfusion of factor to stop the bleeding at its. The most important part as we discussed is genetic counseling. This helps to understand the genes which are affecting this individual. This helps us to plan the treatment and management protocols and definitely helps us to uh, understand the recurrence risk, which that means the chances of this disorder going into the next generation. With this, I wish you all a very aware, safe and a happy world in Mophilia. Thank you.